you're wondering what CRNA school is really like, and you're specifically wondering what the core anesthesia classes are like. My name is Anna. I am now a second year SRNA, student registered nurse anesthetist. And today we're talking about a recap of semester three, which is the first semester where we had core anesthesia classes. We're gonna talk about five takeaways that are different from the rest of the curriculum and a couple of lessons that I learned along the way. If we haven't met, my name is Anna. I was a new grad nurse at Johns Hopkins in the CVSICU starting off in 2019. In 2020, there was a certain worldwide event that ended up kind of changing my trajectory a little bit. I was not ever planning on becoming a travel nurse, but because of the pandemic, I decided that this was something that I might as well pursue. So 2020 through 2023, I was a travel nurse. And during that time, I was in San Diego, I was in LA, Portland, Seattle. I met so many incredible people, learned a lot along the way, and I also started making content. And I have really enjoyed sharing my journey with all of you. And along the way, I also met up with Chrissy CRNA. She and I share a vision for empowering the next generation of critical care nurses and nurse anesthetists. We have monthly lectures that we have in the Confident Care Academy membership, but we also have a free podcast where we talk about everything from being a new guide in the ICU to preparing to go to anesthesia school to travel nursing, financial advice, all of that stuff. Definitely check out the podcast. But today we're talking about five takeaways from core anesthesia didactic. It is 9 a.m. here, so very first thing I'm going to caffeinate before we get started. Before we dive into the five takeaways, let's talk about which classes we actually took. So the classes that we took in semester three of didactic were anatomy, chemistry, and physics, advanced health assessment, and advanced physiology and pathophysiology one. One thing that was interesting about all of these courses are that the we started to have anesthesia faculty teaching our classes at this point. So the anatomy and physiology was taught by our core faculty. Chemistry and physics was also taught by anesthesia faculty. The physiology slash pathophysiology was not taught by anesthesia faculty, but the health assessment was. So 75% of our courses were taught by CRNAs, which is something that I really enjoy as a student. Let's now look at how I did. We'll flash this up on the screen here. And I did not make straight A's on everything in this semester. And that is okay. I think it's important for people who are coming into CRNA school to now see that the end goal is for you to understand the material and for you to be an excellent CRNA. You no longer have to make a 98% on everything in order to ensure success in your future. However, it is important that I maintain a higher than 82% average on all the exams. And that really gets into the very first thing that is different about core didactic classes. The first thing that's different about core didactic classes is you might have less of a buffer in your classes for your grades. What do I mean by that? I mean that often in your courses, you're going to have papers, group assignments, group projects, presentations. A lot of times in many classes, your grade doesn't come from exams alone. In your core didactic anesthesia classes, you may find that, I, like I found, that the grade comes from exams alone. There were two classes this semester that were like this for me. The anatomy and physiology was only based off of exam grades. There were no filler assignments, there were no papers, there were no presentations. You had to maintain higher than an 82% on all the exams, and that was it. Chemistry and physics may have had one paper, but I believe it was the same. I believe there were also no other assignments within that course, and I believe that the grades were only from your exam scores. And this might have to be a whole separate episode in and of itself, but semester three at Didactic, I was going through a divorce, and I ended up getting a failing grade on my first anatomy exam. I made a 70, maybe a 72. Again, uh, that is failing <laughs> in CRNA school, and it's hard to start off on the wrong foot in a class where you have to just maintain a higher than 82% average. And then to then come back from that and to score high A or high Bs, low As for the rest of the semester is something that I was able to do, but was difficult at the time. So I think there is a whole discussion to be had about positive self-talk and changing study habits and really just like rising to the occasion because at the end of the day, you do have to learn how to trust yourself to get it done. You have to be able to figure it out. And the only person who is going to help you through that is you. That's maybe a whole separate podcast episode. But that being said, if anybody out there has ever had a bad grade on an exam, that is okay. You're not alone and you will figure it out so that you're going to be able to do what you need to do. But let's move on to the point two. 
The second thing that is different about your core didactic classes is that the material is not gonna be spoon fed. You will have your three, four hour lectures and I encourage you all to look at that really as a starting place for learning and understanding the material. Anesthesia school is unlike nursing school, it's unlike any of your other previous classes. You are likely not going to be given a study guide. You are likely going to be given a range within the textbook that the material covers. You will be given slides and you'll be told to figure it out. And then the exam is going to be comprehensive covering things that were and were not talked about in class. This is an adjustment for many learners. So because the content is not spoon fed, I had to learn how to be a self teacher and to be someone who is going to seek out lots of information from various different sources, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. Takeaway number three is that the exam structure can be pretty different from other exam structures that you've had in the past. You have some exams that are multiple choice, but the majority of our anesthesia content is a mix of multiple choice, select all that apply, highlighting on anatomical structures, and some essay questions. Essay questions can be particularly challenging because you don't necessarily know what the grader is looking for you to say, and also you can't fake it. If it's a select, if it's a multiple choice, you can sometimes guess, but if it's just a blank page and you're having to write everything you know about a medication or an intervention, you do have to actually know the material. So that definitely will change the way that you start to prepare for your exams, knowing that it's not only going to be multiple choice, it's also going to be select all that apply, essay questions. You really have to be able to have like a very strong understanding on the, of the knowledge. The fourth takeaway is what did not work. And what doesn't work for me might be different from what won't work for you. But one thing that doesn't really work in CRNA school for me at least is studying from the slides alone. The slides alone just simply don't have all the material that you need to know. And the slides alone I need to view as more of a starting point versus an ending point. Another thing that doesn't work is studying for nine or 10 hours a day. I learned that you have to actually build your endurance with studying so that you can have longer study blocks, but you do need to also be just wise with your time. So I don't ever study more than five or six hours in a day because you end up not being productive after that point. Another thing that doesn't work is negative self-talk. If you beat yourself up for a lower grade or fumbling on an intubation or in general just not knowing something and then you get in your own head about it, you can spiral to a point where you're not only not very teachable in the moment, but you can hurt yourself for future performance. If you can learn to instead replace the negative self-talk with positive self-talk, I find that it is so much helpful as a learner. And as someone who had a lot of anxiety as a new grad nurse, this is something that I've been working on for about three years now. Comment if that's something that you want a whole video on, just like how to rewire and how to kind of change some of that self-talk so that you can end up in a place where you're primed to not only show up clinically for your patients, but also for yourself. Now let's talk about what did work. As far as study habits, everybody's gonna be different. But for me, what I found is that I like starting off with apex anesthesia. Many of you have apex anesthesia and many of you will be using it for your boards prep. This is something that I would recommend you go in together as a class and get the group discount. And then I recommend using it the entire way through anesthesia school, not only when you're studying for boards. This episode is not sponsored by Apex. I do think that they make an amazing product, but I like to start with Apex and their modules on any given topic. So I will go through, if it's a vocal cord anatomy is what we're studying for the exam, I will start with Apex. I will go through all of the correlating modules. I will take the practice exams. And then from there, I will start to move on to my next sources of information. Because again, in anesthesia school, you really can't just stop at one source of knowledge. You really have to like supplement from lots of different places. So I start with Apex and then from there, I go to the slides. I listen back to the slides. I record the lectures on notability. And as I'm listening back to the lecture and going through the slides with my base knowledge in Apex, I will go ahead and then pull relevant information from the slides into a study guide that I do in question based format. So if there's a bullet point on the slide that says the cricoid is at like C6 or whatever, I will say, instead of saying the cricoid is at level C6, I will say, where is the cricoid anatomically? And then underneath that, I will write the answer. So then all of the relevant bullet points from the slides, I'm 
copying over into question-based format into a study guide for myself. After I start with Apex and supplement with the slides where I'm listening to the professors back for any key words or any like relevant information that they're dropping that's not on their slides, then I will go and read Nagelhout and then I will pull in relevant charts and tables from Nagelhout into my study guide that I make on Google Docs. And then from there, I will supplement with Morgan and McHale for even deeper knowledge and understanding. And then from Morgan and McHale, I will go on to Miller Anesthesia. And for Miller Anesthesia, the main thing that I really like are all the practice questions that are, go in the supplemental workbook. There's also a very large Anki deck that I like to use for continuing learning for spaced repetition content. Because there's some things in anesthesia school that you need to learn once for an exam, but the majority of anesthesia school is cumulative because our boards are cumulative. So after I have started with Apex, pulled from the slides, made a study guide where I'm asking myself questions so that I'm giving the answers, and I'm incorporating spaced repetition with my Anki decks, the day before the exam, my friends and I like to get together and we use teach back method to fill in the gaps of knowledge that we each have for each other. And this is a really good way to kind of cement everything in our heads. And it also really helps with getting rid of like pre-exam anxiety. It is so real. It's so, so good to chat with your friends to make sure that you're all kind of on the same page. It also helps when you're going to an, into an exam knowing that, hey, me and four other people were on the same page. I don't think that I missed something monumental for this exam. Overall, all the things that work, that I found work for me, are just kind of an accumulation of the science-based study tips. We have a whole podcast episode that goes over five research studies that are current and that demonstrate how to best retain information and learn new information. That's a whole podcast episode that's free on the Confident Care Academy um, podcast. You should go check that one out. And do comment and let me know if you want me to go over like step by step with like a screen share of how I like to make my Google Docs study guides. I'd be happy to go over that with y'all if that's something that you think is interesting. I will also say this. I really, really enjoyed the Skillshare class by Ali Abdal on Anki. If you are pre-anesthesia and you know that you're about to start, that is something that it's free. You just sign up for the Skillshare. I'm not an affiliate currently, unfortunately, but that's a class that's really well worth it. And Ali Abdal's class on how to learn is also incredibly worth your time. So overall, those are the five takeaways from didactic semester three, but the first semester. And I'm filming vlogs and I'm also filming a student loans episode. Comment whether you'd rather see the vlog or the student loans episode first. Thanks, guys.